Welcome back everyone. Today on Living Survival we're going to take a look at how to program one of these handheld radios using the Chirp software on a Mac. So a very popular video for me was the Baofeng for Dummies. Baofeng being one of the more popular affordable uh, two-way radios that you can get. Great for an emergency, great for scanning your uh, local services such as EMS, fire, and police, especially in an emergency situation. You can monitor road crews, you can monitor all sorts of stuff, but one of the uh, difficult things is actually programming the radio in. Now in other videos I've done on the Baofengs, I have shown how to manually program those in. Now this process has been fairly simple for those of you that have a Windows computer, but for those of you like myself which only use a Mac computer, it's been a little bit more difficult. So I did figure out how to use the cable, how to get that installed properly on the Mac, and now you can get the Chirp software for Mac. So I'm gonna go through and show you how I program my ham radio from start to finish. So a few things you're gonna need before you get started. One is one of these amateur slash professional. I say that because they are on the more affordable end. However, they can pretty much do uh, a lot of the features that the uh, more advanced radios can do. And you don't wanna spend a fortune, especially if you're not gonna really get into ham radios and you simply want something that you can just uh, monitor frequencies or that you could use to transmit in an emergency situation. So I have the Woksun KG UVD-1P, a popular radio from Woksun. It's a little bit more expensive than the Baofengs. I do like it a little bit better, mainly because you can change uh, menu options and uh, scroll through your channels with the twist of a dial up top. On the Baofeng, you do have to use the arrow buttons and at night, or if you're using a handheld uh, like a lapel, easier to do that when this thing is clicked to a bag or clicked uh, to your uh, belt. So I do like this radio a little bit better, but the features are pretty much the same. So this tutorial will pretty much work for uh, this radio as well as the Baofengs and a few others that are similar to it. Next thing you're gonna need is a programming cable, one that plugs into the headset jack on the side of the radio. Now you can find these all over Amazon and the price tends to vary. The official ones or the ones that say they're official will range in the 20 to $30 price point. I picked this one up for eight bucks, took a chance. There was a few hiccups getting it installed, mainly because these are clone uh, copies of the original cables and they do have a chipset inside them, so you do have to get that chipset installed. Now many of you are probably familiar with the two-way radios that you can pick up at sporting goods stores, such as this Midland two-way radio. You can use these on the FRS channels, the family radio service channels, and the GMRS channels as well. Now you do need a license for anything other than the FRS uh, channels. They're, they have very limited range and limited power. So again, the Woksun radio, very similar to the Baofeng radios. You're going to want to have it charged. These are dual band radios, very simple radios, uh, you know, 99 to 100 channels. They do have a little flashlight. They can also receive the FM uh, radio uh, stations as well, which is nice. Again, just a few features on this that I like a little bit better than the Baofeng, such as the antenna that it comes with. You can always buy other antennas for your Baofengs, but I do like the ability to just twist this dial and be able to get to the frequencies that I use most often. Then on the side here, you have your two ports. This cover simply slides away and that's where you're gonna plug your programming cable in to be able to send and receive the data from the radio. So two things you're gonna need on the computer end of things to be able to program your radio is number one, the software that gives you the ability to do so. I use Chirp, it seems to be the most popular. They have a bunch of different brands listed that this will work with. It'll work with most handheld radios that are commonly available today. And then you gotta make sure the correct driver is installed for the particular cable that you end up getting. Downloading and installing the Chirp software is pretty straightforward. You simply go to their website, click the download link. It's gonna give you options for it, not only Windows users, but also, as I said, Mac OS users as well. Now, depending on the version of Mac OS you're using, there are several different tips on their website. I'm using the latest version, Hi Sierra. I just downloaded it, installed it, and it worked straight away. Now, if all goes well and you get lucky, you'll be able to send and receive from the radio right away. In my case, the cable wasn't being recognized in my system, so I'm gonna show you several of the things I did to get it to recognize the cable that I purchased. 
On a Mac, you can go into the system report, very similar to how you would do it on a Windows computer. Then we can look at our USB and see what hardware is connected to our USB. In this case, it's USB to serial controller. When I click on it, you can see that this is the prolific technology uh, type of cable. Now the cable that I got does support the prolific uh, driver however it did not work for me right away and I ended up having to uninstall the uh, default prolific driver that came with the Mac and then I had to reinstall the updated prolific driver uh, from their website I'll link that down below as well but once you get that installed it's going to recognize your cable and again allow you to send and receive from the radio so once you've connected the USB to the computer and the other end to the radio it's as simple as loading up the Chirp software. We're gonna click on radio here and we're gonna click on download from radio. Now you should see your port listed in the drop down box. That was the problem that I was having before. The serial port was not listed. Again, I solved that by uninstalling and reinstalling. Now I can go ahead and click on that uh, particular port. It also is going to give you an option for vendor of your radio. You can see they have a ton of different vendors in here and then the specific model of your radio as well. Once we click OK, you're gonna get a flashing light on the radio and you can see here that it is cloning from the radio. So it's gonna download all the information from the radio, not only the frequencies that it has programmed in, but also the settings, which I find is pretty cool. And you can do that all from this Chirp software. So very quickly it downloads and you can see here that I've programmed in all the FRS channels and all the GMRS channels. That again is gonna allow me to communicate with the, uh, with the two-way radios that you can get pretty much everywhere. I have a few sets of them so it's cool that I can use my ham radio to connect to those as well. So on the side of Chirp there is two different tabs. You have your memories, which again is your memory that you have programmed in. I believe this radio goes up to 128 there. It shows you 1 to, 1 to 128. And then you also have a settings tab, which you can go in and configure different settings for the radio. So we can, uh, instead of just manually going through the radio and clicking through the menu options, you can simply uh, change those defaults here and then clone it back to the radio. So that is pretty nice as well. I'm not gonna change anything here. What you probably should do when you first get your radio is go ahead and uh, set it back to its defaults or clear it out so that you're starting fresh and then you can go ahead and program in whichever frequencies you'd like. All right, so I've gone ahead and cleared my radio back to defaults, clearing out all the memories. We're gonna start from scratch here. Now you may ask, where do I find a list of all the frequencies in my area? From the Chirp software, we can uh, import some stock configurations. So you can see here, US, FRS, and GMRS channels, US and Canada Railroad, NOAA weather, uh, the marine channels. Uh, so they do have some, uh, some defaults that you can program in there. Then the other web website that you can use is radioreference.com. Now I talked about this a little bit in my previous video, but basically you can go to their frequency database, click on your region. So I'm in Michigan here. I can go to a county and go down to Oakland County, and then it's going to give me all the different frequencies that are used in my area. So we have emergency management, the tornado sirens, we have uh, public safety frequencies, fairground frequencies, fire frequencies, police, road commission. Road commission is pretty cool if it's snowing a ton out and the roads are really bad or they're starting to close down roads. You can listen to the uh, public works in your area or the road crews and see how, uh, how they're coming along. Some, however, some areas are going to be encrypted so you can't use uh, or listen to those uh, those frequencies. Now you can listen to a frequency or receive a frequency without a license. However, in order to transmit on any of those frequencies, you do have to have the license. So I do suggest getting the license, but you can see here there's all different cities that are going to be listed with special frequencies for those cities. Now, just because you program a frequency in doesn't generally mean you're going to receive it. Of course, if you're indoors in your home or you're further away from the tower, of course, you're not going to be able to receive those frequencies, but I still feel it's a good idea to have them in there, uh, you know, just in case there is something happening closer by uh, to where you live, chances are you're going to be able to pick something up on those frequencies. So once you know the frequencies that you want to program in, it's as simple as taking that information and plugging it 
into chirp. You can see here on radio reference, it not only gives you the frequency number, but it gives you the tone if there is one and other information that you'll need to plug into chirp. In my case, I'm gonna start with the defaults here. So the first default that I wanna put in is the NOAA weather. So I'm gonna click on import from stock configuration, click on NOAA weather alert, and that is going to simply prepare the list of weather channels. It's going to put them uh, into the frequency slots on my radio. You can see here it's used slot one to 10. So that's the different uh, weather radios that are around the country here. Next, I wanna put in those FRS and GMRS channels. So I'm simply gonna click on that as well. Very quickly, it prepares them. I'm gonna click OK. And now you can see here that it puts those in as well. Now, it does seem to overwrite in the chirp. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to go ahead and put back my NOAA weather because I do want those first. So I'm gonna put those in uh, one to 10, and then I'm gonna start with the uh, FRS and GMRS after that. So I, want, I know I wanna start at 11. So let's go to import to and from. I just added 10 there. You can add one, minus one. So now it's gonna put them in the 11 through 32 slot. So I'm gonna say okay. Just like that, we have our weather in the one to 10 slots and then starting there with FRS one, all the way down to all the GMRS channels as well. Then if we wanna write that to the radio, very simple. We just simply say upload to radio. Again, it's gonna ask you for the port and the model number and it's gonna clone back to the radio. And that is it. I mean, it's as simple as that using the software, so much easier than programming those in uh, to the radio uh, manually. And again, you can adjust the name, whichever you want uh, the name to be, you can change those. So you could, if you're putting in a local police or something like that, you would wanna label that police, fire, EMS, public safety, you could do that all in the Chirp software and then simply just write it back to your radio. So then back over to the radio side of things here, you can see that the numbers are all programmed in here that I just set up the FRS, the GMRS, and the weather. Now it just so happens that my particular weather comes in on channel one. So you can see there is my first weather channel. Now this is dual band radio, so I could set it up to, uh, to monitor two different frequencies at once but I commonly use the FRS radios. We have those on channel nine. So I could just go here to channel nine and then FRS nine, and then that would allow me to communicate with uh, the users on channel nine with the uh, two-way radio. So very cool stuff you can do. Again, I'll go back in the Chirp software and program in my local police fire EMS. And again, uh, be able to listen to those if they are close by or in my area. Again, great to have one of these in the car, all set up and programmed. If you did have to leave home for some reason, you can monitor what's going on around you. Of course, you can manually program these as well, but again, it's a lot simpler using that Chirp software. So very, very easy to use. And finally, I can do it now on a Mac. So that works great. All right, so hopefully you guys found this video informative. Again, I have another uh, video that shows in depth the menu settings and how to change those and what you would use those for. But again, probably a good idea to have one of these in your uh, car kit or your get home or your bug out bag. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Please give it a big thumbs up for me. Make sure to leave your comments below. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Leave those uh, down below as well. Please share this video on your social media with anybody who might find it helpful. And as always, guys, click that red subscribe button and that notification bell to be notified of new videos.